Well, good morning. This is Brother Chad Long from Delhi Baptist Church. And most of you already know that if you watch this very regularly. But just in case you are a newcomer, just stumbled upon it, I am Chad and uh, I am from Delhi Baptist Church. And we are studying through 2 Peter. If you have stumbled upon this, you don't have to start at the very beginning where we all started a year ago, but I would at the very least try to begin at the beginning of a book or at the very least the chapter. If you stumble on this, go look on our YouTube page and you'll find that we start each of these letters we've been studying from the beginning and everywhere where we've ever had a Bible study, we started at the beginning, we didn't start in the middle. So if you want to get the most out of it, um, do that. Otherwise, um, it's good to have everybody here. And I hope you have your Bibles, and I hope you're in Second Peter, chapter 1. Um, no, we're in chapter 2 now. We finished chapter 1. At the end of chapter 1, we were um, Peter was telling us about how the Word of God is inspired. It's, uh, it is the Word of God, not the Word of man. If we can't agree on that, we can't go anywhere, because that's where a lot of your heresies pop up. As soon as you get someone to cast doubt on whether or not this is truly God's word, well then uh, there's really no foundation anymore for the Christian faith. Everything hinges on this book. Everything hinges on the truth. And if you don't believe this is the truth, I can't help you. Um, God can, but I can't. Uh, and really it's only limited what I can do anyway. The, the Lord's got a lot. it will lead you. He's got to guide you. He's got to show you. But anyway, we come to chapter 2 of Second Peter. And after having told us that the Word of God is the foundation, that it is, uh, it is written by God, that uh, men were moved, but that God did the work. We come to chapter 2, verse 1, and the Bible says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction there's a whole lot in this verse <clears throat> people get mad at me when I name up other preachers like Benny Hinn or Joel Osteen people get mad at me Joyce Meyer and they can get mad I don't care I, I'm not I don't have a personal problem with any of those people <clears throat> it's not personal but if you're not teaching it right you need to quit you need to find something else to do Joel Olstein is obviously a very good motivational speaker. He ought to go into that. Um, if you're not going to teach the Bible the way that it is, don't teach it. Just just do something else. I don't claim to know a lot, but I know when the Bible teaches something and when someone's teaching against what it says. I have that much discernment. <clears throat> Peter didn't name anybody here, and maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I shouldn't name people. Maybe I should just... Uh, teach it like it is and let people see it for themselves but a few of these people just get under my skin um, Benny Hinn does because some of the things that he teaches and does from a stage and gets paid for is just re repulsive and uh, I just can't stand it I don't watch him but I've seen him in action a time or two and, and it's just it's sad because you don't see any of that stuff in scripture I don't know where he gets it from and I don't know why he has such a big following. I mean, you, you give people the truth, you can't fill a room. You give them a bunch of crap that they want to hear, and man, you can fill ten rooms. It's just, uh, but anyway, I didn't bring it up, Peter did. And I'm not trying to get on Benny Hinn or anybody else. It was just an example that uh, there are false teachers. In my opinion, those are some of them. But whether you agree with me or not, you have to agree there are false teachers among the people. There were even then. That's the sad thing. We have them today because they've had thousands of years to try to get some kind of a, a, a cult going. But, you know, it kills me that in, in, in Peter's day, within 30 years of Christ dying on the cross and, and uh, being resurrected and walking around and showing himself to his people, within that time, they've already gain them some false teachers and I just that's crazy to me but anyway that's the devil that's proof that it's the devil he said there should be false teachers among you who privately that means privately shall bring in damnable heresies 
heresies that teach contrary to the word of God are damnable. If that's if you're wondering what that means. Even to the point of denying the Lord that bought them. Now here's one example of that. And I'm just going to give you an example. For them that don't know, Islam teaches the gospel of Jesus. Are you sitting down? Yes, I just said that. Islam teaches Moses, the books of Moses, believes them like we do, believe it or not. <clears throat> it teaches, uh, let's see. In fact, I believe all the prophets. I believe they accept all the prophets. They accept the entire Old Testament with the exception of the Psalms and the poetic books. So they, they, they don't take the Old Testament the way we do. But they believe all the writings of Moses. That's the first five books of the Bible. Uh, not sure where they stand on Joshua. I haven't studied that. But but they agree with all your major and minor prophets as well. Which floors me. Because every one of those prophets talked about Christ. Well, they talk about Christ. They believe there was a gospel of Jesus. And they believe that that gospel was what Jesus was preaching as a prophet. Where they screw up is they do not accept Christ as the Lord. They do not accept him as God's son or as divine. They believe he's on the same footing as Moses or even John the Baptist. They believe in John the Baptist. When I found that out, that floored me too. The, the Muslims believe in John the Baptist. And they like him. Hey, they got no problem with him. But they lump him into the same group that they lump everybody else into. Just really good men, good prophets, good leaders, good teachers. Well, here's the problem with that. And this is just an example. Islam is not the only religion that does this, but this is an example. When he says, even denying the Lord that bought them, well, that's what they do. They deny Christ bought them. They, and, and when it says bought them, it's not talking about saved people. He's talking about the saving work. See, the same Jesus that bought me bought lost people. The difference is I accepted the payment and they didn't. So when it says the Lord that bought them, that doesn't mean these false teachers are saved. It just means that the purchase was made. They may not accept it, but the purchase was made. <clears throat> so Islam denies that the Lord bought them. So that would be an example. It's just an example. I'm not here to bash Islam. They do enough of that themselves. I don't. They don't need me, but <clears throat> it's just one example. There are others. The Hinduism teaches that Jesus is a God, but they don't really believe that. If they did, they wouldn't serve all their mothers. Anyhow, um, most people who are spiritually minded at all are fine with Christ and his teachings up until the point where they have to accept him as Savior, and that's where they part ways. And then they go and teach the things they believe, and it's a false doctrine. They're false teachers, and that's what this is talking about. It says, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. It doesn't seem swift. It doesn't. But it will be. When the Lord handles these things, He's going to handle them swiftly and justly. And so don't worry about that. That's going to happen. Um, there are a great number of false teachers and preachers out there. And my biggest prayer is that I'll never say or do anything that would dishonor my Lord or to mislead anyone. I'm a human being and I make mistakes, but I know I have the right doctrine. Now I just have to follow it. That's where I have to be careful. Verse 2 says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, <coughs> by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Pernicious ways means they're able to commit particular sins and not feel any shame about it. They don't have any shame because they're not saved. So if you're able to live like them, look, we all sin. I'm not telling you that if you sin, that you fit in that category. But when I sin, and I do, when I sin, I feel some guilt about it. I have remorse. I, I'm ashamed. I, I, I don't want. I don't want to sin against my Lord. I don't want to be at odds with Him. I don't want Him upset with me or disappointed in me. That's the sign of a Christian who has the Holy Spirit inside them that's convicting them of their sin. But these that follow them, that are lost, they get into these pernicious ways and they don't have that shame or sorrow. It says, By reason of the way of truth shall be even evil spoken of. Um, 
Well, and that's true. Anytime there's a contrast, somebody's going to be spoken bad of. Somebody's got to be right and somebody's got to be wrong. Verse uh, 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That's a long, fancy way of saying they're going to make money and take advantage of you. And that's all that means. And you see this today, but they saw it then. These guys get paid to lie to you, to tell you what you want to hear, to receive your money. You know, I don't receive a dollar off these YouTube videos, and I don't want one. Don't send me money. I don't want your money. Give it to the Lord and His local church. Make sure you get into a good scriptural, doctrinal church, and you put your money in the plate to support that ministry. I don't want your money. I don't need it. I don't, but God takes good care of me. And there's not really anything I want that I don't have. I, I, I don't need anything. These guys think that they've got to have all of these things and they take advantage of you and they get paid to do it. And they'll get on that screen, they'll look you in the eye, they'll pull at your heartstrings and beg you for money and you'll send it thinking that there's some certain something, some, some godly person and you'll send it thinking they're going to pray for you and bless you. And it's just a hoax. And I wish people were smart and could see through that. Um, the only institution the Lord ever taught us to support was our local ones and ones where we can learn at the feet of these, these uh, good and godly people who are humble, who honor the Lord and, and His Word and not themselves. And you can tell the difference if you know what to look for. Anyway, um, it says, They make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Um, again, this is a reference to what's coming, and uh, you, you may think it's not, but it is. They're not long for uh, um, before they'll be judged by the Lord. <coughs> now, watch this. This is proof of it, and then I'm through. Verses four and five are examples. And God spared not the angels that sinned. They cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, the preacher of righteousness, bringing in a flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live godly and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, and the point is, which he's going to get to in verse 8, if he'll do all those things, he's going to take care of this too. We'll get there. These are examples. All this is saying is God's not going to put up with it. He didn't put up with it out of the angels. He didn't put up with it out of the uh, uh, antediluvian age, the pre-flood period. He didn't put up with it in Sodom and Gomorrah. He's not going to put up with it in America. He's not going to put up with it anywhere. He's not going to continue to permit these false teachers and preachers to lead people astray and to cause them misery. And at their expense, God's going to straighten those things out and there will be a judgment. There will be a payday. But again, 1 Peter was focused on the people that are attacking the church. 2 Peter is focused on those that are trying to identify with it for their own gain. And they're false and they're fake and they're doing harm to our Christianity and to the uh, perception of Christianity. The world sees these idiots and they think they're aligned with us and they're not. I don't want anybody looking at Benny Hinn and believing that he's a Christian and that I'm one by association. I don't even want anybody looking at Joel Holstein and thinking he's a Christian and that because he's a Christian, I'm uh, associated with him. Um, I don't. Again, I don't have anything personal against these men, but if they're not going to teach the truth, I wish they'd shut up and do something else. I really do. Um, I don't need their money. I don't need their praise. I don't, I don't care anything about them personally, but I, I do care about the stuff they teach people. It's not helping anybody. They, they may think it is, but it's not. it is helping somebody. It's helping them to get rich and to uh, lord over folks. But anyhow, I've said enough for today. We'll look at it some more tomorrow. I hope that you, you, we're on here. I hope that the people who follow this are saved and that they have enough discernment in their hearts to know the difference between when they're being told the truth and when they're being lied to. If you have enough discernment to know the difference, you'll be fine. If you don't, you need to get saved, and you need to grow in your, grow in your, your walk. 
and let yourself be discipled to a point to where you know when the Lord's talking to you and when somebody who does not represent the Lord is talking to you. You need to know the difference. And I don't claim to be anything at all. I'm, I'm not. I'm just a, a sinner saved by grace. I'm just reading you what the Bible says and interpreting it the best way I know how by the power of God. And so anyway, if anybody follows me, really what you need to do is follow Jesus. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a good weekend.